And I don't think it's any secret at this point that I'm a huge fan of Smith & Wesson. And there's a variety of reasons. First off, they are a company that is deeply rooted in American tradition and heritage. They have some of the best striker fired pistols on the market now, some of the best shooting concealed carry guns, and probably the best revolvers on the planet as well. But they're also not a company afraid to take chances and come out with new innovative designs. And they continuously are dropping these designs. Their engineers have been hard at work yet again, though, with the new FPC. And that's what we're going to take a look at today. So if you're into guns with cool and unique features, this is the review for you. And today I'm going to tell you pros and cons. I'm going to take you to the range with me. And I'm going to show you all the unique features that make the FPC is what it is. And big thanks to Smith & Wesson for sending this out so I could bring this review to you. Now, of course, the big part of this gun, the, the, the big selling point is, is the foldability, right? So as you can see, it's folded in half. The charging handle doubles as the retainer for the actual barrel and handguard. That's, that's what keeps this all in place. So we pull back on the charging handle just a little bit and boom, we unfold it. There's actually a little notch right here, which hooks on to the handguard there. And then here is the actual folder itself. Now, one thing that I really want to focus on is what this gun is good for, right? And kind of distinguishing the line from needing a pistol caliber carbine to a rifle, because I think that's an important discussion where we're talking about guns like this. But before we get to that, let's talk about the features and what makes this gun unique. Let's start in the front here. As we go back further, that's when it starts to get more interesting. So quickly, you got a 16 and a quarter inch barrel, M-lock handguard, very thin handguard as well, Picatinny rail all the way up top. Now, when you have an optic on here, I have the HE510C, the green dot from Holosyn. It doesn't interfere whenever you fold it. So that is one nice feature of the FPC. Now, when we move back a little bit further, it starts to get a little more interesting. So essentially what we have here is a pistol lower, almost exactly like a pistol. Everything from the bolt release to the grip, everything. The magazine release, of course, just like a pistol. That's where our mags are gonna go. And all of your magazines, double stack magazines from previous Smith & Wesson guns, like the Smith & Wesson core right here, all those mags are gonna work. So you have that compatibility. If you have a bunch of these laying around, perfect. Now this gun does come with three magazines. It comes with one 17 round and two of the 23 round mags, which is nice to see, dude. I, I've never seen a Smith & Wesson higher capacity magazine like this one. The highest I've ever seen is in their full size guns. So that is pretty cool, man. Now they do have this sleeve on here. I'm not quite sure why they went back to this design. It seems to be a little better than the old design, I will say that. But they have been using now for some time this design right here, which actually does not separate from the base plate at all, right? So maybe they improve this because the, the biggest issue with this, especially in concealed carry guns, is if you had to swap mags and this was all the way up like this, then trying to insert that mag could become a problem. Now, from what I've seen, these things slide much better than the old ones. So will that be an issue? I don't know. You could make sure it's not an issue and just pull it right off, right? And then it's gonna lock in that way as well. So really up to you. I like the design they've been going with recently where it doesn't even slide at all better, but it is what it is. That's what it came with. So 223 round mags. We'll get more, we'll get around to the mags here in a little bit too. You have a cross bolt style safety right there. It's got the texturing from the Smith & Wesson grip, interchangeable palm swells, your palm swells, your magazines, all of that stuff comes in a nice little canvas case that you can store the gun in as well. Updated Smith & Wesson trigger right here. And then this is your bolt release. So just like a low profile pistol, it's ambidextrous of course. Um, and, uh, and, and that is your bolt release, right? It's really small, but I figured it has to be small because of the way this folds over. Um, I assume that's why it's such a low profile design right there. Around to the other side, again, here's your folding mechanism. 
Here is your bolt, charging handle, again, cross bolt style safety. Now let's go back to the rear here and check out this. So essentially it houses those additional magazines for you. And of course, loaded or unloaded, the release for those is right here. So this one here that I'm pressing down on now is gonna release this mag. And then this one obviously would release this and they snap into place. Now, of course, it will work with, with smaller mags too. You just gotta really kind of pop those into place just like that. It definitely works better with the longer magazines for sure. You can see the underside right here. That's where your buffer spring and tube and all of that kind of stuff is right there. And then your cheek piece, and it's got a little bit of a, of it's not really rubberized on the back of this at all, but the recoil is so minimal. Yeah, I don't know that you really even need that. Now with all guns, the most exciting part is when you get them out to the range and see how they shoot. And I, I really didn't know what to expect because the only gun I've shot like this ever is the Sub 2K and that's been years and years. So I was pretty excited and uh, a little bit anxious to see how this one did at the range. Um, and I think it actually did a pretty freaking awesome job. Now, the breakdown is interesting. So we pulled all the mags out. Let's make sure that we are safe. Get that mag out of there. Let the bolt go home. So essentially we're gonna hold the rifle up. We're gonna press down firmly to take some of the pressure off. of the rear. And so once we pull, we're basically just gonna pull this straight out. And so that's gonna allow us to get tension off of the spring and stuff back here. So essentially we're just pushing this down so we can then pull that pin out. And then from here, see if I can do it on camera here. You basically push this down, push this pin out, right? You can see it coming out right there. And essentially what I did is I took the tip of a bullet, like a 308, and pushed that little pin out of there. And then that's where we can then pull a little plug and the spring out. All right, we got this thing taken apart. Let's put it back together. We're just gonna do this whole thing in reverse. Basically, you're gonna just slide it on that channel there, push it forward, and here is the bolt. So it is a two-piece bolt, and this is as far as you have to break it down to actually clean it. But wanted to show you all the components and, and basically how this works. Now, it is a direct blowback gun, so you have this big mass, and of course the buffer spring wraps around this uh, bolt carrier group right here and makes it all work together. Solid piece of steel right here. So we're gonna take this, we're gonna slide it in the back of the gun, and we're just gonna line up that hole, which you can see right there. And we're gonna keep it in place for a minute. 
take this pin, slide it down in there. All right, push it up in there. All right, now that we got it to this point, we're going to take the spring, toss it back in there. We got the plug right here. And it doesn't matter which way the, uh, the spring goes in there, by the way. From here, you want to push this thing down. Hear that click? Basically the bolt locking into place. Now we can take the pin, slide it back through. Just make sure it's lined up. And then that's going to click in place. Boom. Just like that. We take the stock, get it started. It's down on this area here, right here. Press it down, lift this out, press down, boom. And that is how you break it down. So it seems like a complicated process, but it's really not that bad at all. I love that smell. That smell when the bullet comes out. Mm -hmm. It's different than um It's different than pistol shooting. Woo! That thing's pretty fun. So now what I want to do is I want to weigh this thing because this is where the question of, you know, carbine or rifle at this point comes into play. And so we're going to talk about the uses or the uses as I see them for this thing. Um, but I do want to get a weight on it. So we're all zeroed out, right? Place it on there. Two empty mags in the stock, one in the grip. Six pounds, three ounces. So of course, once we load it up, depending on what kind of ammo we run in here, that's gonna change it a little bit. So where is this good, right? And what situations is this good for? And when would it be smart to just kind of forego this and go to a rifle? And I think that really depends on what you're doing. All right, if we're talking about you're going hunting for elk and bear and, you know, deer and stuff like that, well, you know, obviously a rifle is going to be uh, better suited to your needs. Cool. Let's go to 300. All right, let's go to 400, dude. Holy smokes. But if we're talking survival gun, backpack gun, where let's say you're in bear territory, so you are concerned with that, but you wanna have something else that you can pull out that's gonna give you a little more velocity, something that you can shoot a little bit easier, then you could have like, let's say a 10 millimeter or a 44 Magnum or something else better for, uh, better suited to protect yourself against bear on your hip and then have something like this in your backpack. If you're going hiking, camping, or any of those things where you need 
a, a nine millimeter carbine that you can easily fold. But again, if we're talking about something, some, some bigger game, um, you know, e even like a Liberty situation, like a, uh, you know, a, a end of the world situation. I know a lot of people talk about this, but realistically speaking, would it be better to have this or a rifle? Um, you know, again, I guess it kind of depends on, you know, what kind of stock of ammo do you have, you know? If you got more 223 and stuff like that, well, it might be better to have that. Or you may want to have both, you know? Uh, you know, so that's just kind of up to you. I, I see multiple uses, and, and I do still think this is a good home defense option as well. Obviously a great planker, obviously a great training tool. I think it's a better option than some of the pistol caliber carbines because it folds. That makes it more worth your while because now you can simply put it in your pack and be good to go. Whereas a, a full length non-folding carbine, you have less velocity, less power with a pistol caliber, but you still have a full length rifle, almost the same weight, sometimes more. So those, those make a little less sense, although they still are good for self-defense, good for training, uh, home defense, things like that. People that are timid maybe to firearms, people you're trying to train, right? And so we did the St. Victor, what, a, a month or two ago, um, and that's a decent option as well. I just think this gives you more versatility, right? Because again, it folds. You know, do you want the weight more on the gun or do you want to remove these from the gun? And would you rather have these on your person or these in the pack separate from the gun? You know, um, if you're going to, you know, attach a sling to this and you want to lighten it up a little bit, well, you have that option or you can keep them right there in the gun. I think training with this um, may take a little bit of time. Although it is pretty intuitive because of the way they've designed this right here. I, I first, when I thought about it, I was like, well, shouldn't this release this? But now that I'm actually getting used to it, it makes more sense to me when you press this, assuming it's up against your shoulder, you know, instead of having to try to reach from here to here, it seems easier to me to reach from here to here and then from here to here to catch that magazine and then boom, insert a new one. So I really am a fan of that design. I like what they did here. The, again, it kind of leads to that survival type of setup in a very capable nine millimeter round. I like the fact that it doesn't interfere with your optics when it's folded. The hinge piece works very well. It's really easy to get a hold of. The charging handle itself, um, it's not bad. I thought it would be harder to rack than what it is. Again, you're trying to pull that big mass and bolt carrier uh, back to the rear under pretty decent spring tension as well. Uh, so some people may have issues with it, but it's, it, it gives you enough to hold on to that it's really not a problem there. I do not like the, the uh, bolt release. It, it's, it's like a pistol, which is fine, but it's just too low to the frame uh, to use it in a quicker situation. You really got to get your nail down in there to get that thing uh, where you want it. I'm just not a fan. Uh, the trigger is pretty decent, but I don't think it's as good as the pistols. Check this out. You pull through, there's the reset, there's that pull. It's kind of got a little bit of a clunk. I think the pistol is just a little bit cleaner pull if we look at that, I don't know, it's just a little bit crisper in my opinion, but it's not far off. This isn't far off from the pistol. So that familiarity there, I think is really good. Now, of course, a popular thing to say is, oh, this is just like the Sub 2000 from kel which is a cool little design. I mean, and honestly, they came out with it a long time ago, right? But it ain't nothing like the sub 2K in, in a variety of ways. So obviously they both fold and that's about where the similarities stop because the sub 2K of course folds onto itself. So it makes it a little bit more difficult if you're gonna do something with an optic. 
I think there's special adapters and stuff that you can do to be able to accommodate your optic while it's folded. But regardless with this, you don't have to do that. Is it gonna make it a little bit wider, especially in here? Yeah, it's gonna make it a little wider when it's folded for sure. But I like the fact that it doesn't interfere with your optic. Now, of course, the magazines go in the grip just like the Sub 2K and the Sub 2K does use Glock magazines. Smith & Wesson magazines, it's not like they're not available. You know what I mean? They're pretty prevalent, so really no issue there. Of course, you can store extra mags on this one. You can't on the Sub 2K. The trigger on this one is light years better than the Sub 2K. I think the Sub 2K is like nine and a half pounds, if I'm not mistaken. It is, it's horrendous, but usable, but not great. You know what I mean? And also the charging handle is better on the Smith & Wesson. The Sub 2K has a little, little charging handle right underneath. And because this kind of has like an AR uh, style where you kind of take it with, you know, your, your pointer and your middle finger, uh, it kind of adds some familiarity, but it also makes it easier to charge up. Now the Sub 2K has been reliable for a lot of years, uh, generally speaking, uh, but I have no doubt that this will either. We'll just have to continue to run it and run it and run it and see how it does over time. But Smith & Wesson, really, I don't think I've ever had an issue with any of their guns. Not that I can think of. The M&P 12 was the last one that I remember that had some issue, um, some cracked barrels and stuff. So, you know, they put the recall out and, you know, every manufacturer has something, has something, every single one. So... There's that, but I have no doubt that this thing will be reliable and it's been reliable so far. But as far as this being some kind of sub 2K knockoff, it ain't even close, dude. You're making yourself look silly if you think that's the case. Overall, man, I think this is a great option. I think like all nine millimeter carbines or pistol caliber carbines, uh, for that matter, they're kind of limited. You know, you have to factor in that weight. You have to factor in the fact that you know, you're going to be carrying essentially a full-size rifle, full-size weight with a less than ideal cartridge for a lot of situations. Again, I think this one is a little bit better because it folds and so it makes it a little bit more convenient. And in my opinion, you can justify it, you know, a little bit more, you know, Every situation is different. So who knows if this would work for you, but I'll be honest with you, man, as a truck gun, and again, backpacking, camping, everything we just talked about, I love this little thing, dude. It's super cool. So this design overall, although it does add a little bit of width in here, the benefit outweighs the, the, the extra width that you're gonna have uh, with this folding mechanism. Smith & Wesson, dude, these guys do an amazing job and they never stop innovating and delivering American products to Americans like me and you and people that love the Second Amendment, dude. Absolutely love it for what it is. I'm a fan. Big thanks to you guys. I'd love to hear what you think about the FPC. Is this something that you would actually look at? And I would also be interested to see what do you think the biggest purpose for this type of gun is leave those things down below. Again, thanks to you guys for all your support. If you wanna support me further, you could do that on Patreon. You could subscribe to this channel. You could join this channel even, and I'll leave those links down below. Big thanks again, see you in the next one. And as always, hold them down.
misses. That penis target is just swinging away. <laughs> Let's get the uh, competitor and try that one. 